Good day. I'm Oleg Donsky, a professor of Novosibirsk State University of Economics and Management, Novosibirsk, Russia. Uh, the title of my paper is A Vague Future of Generalized Homo. History uh, resolutely demonstrates that epidemic situations, in contrast to other types of disasters, do not unite but divide people. The specificity of any epidemic is dissimilar with such national troubles as a war or natural disaster, because a disease doesn't unite people but separates them. This is typical for the pandemics of the past that occurred repeatedly in human history, starting with the Athenian epidemic of uh, 430 BC, described by Thucydides. Unlike such disasters as tsunamis or <clears throat> unusual heat that usually lead to massive forest fires or earthquakes, the causes of disease are hidden from the human eye. They are dissolved in water and air. It is this absence of a visible or tangible cause of the epidemic that creates a particular sense of danger. The personal perception of the epidemic may vary, in contrast to a catastrophic situation where the causes are obvious. A situation of incessant uncertainty arises as the process, uh, the process is not completed. All judgments are made from within, since everyone may be in danger and it is fundamentally impossible to rise above the situation in order to reflect on it, until it is completed at least to some extent. Bioethical problems are usually discussed from without, as events already happened or mainly theoretical provisions. However, during the pandemic this discussion arises from within and therefore constantly changes its character under the influence of new and new inputs such as vague symptoms, a very different nature of the cause of the COVID-19 disease, indecision or, on the contrary, too zealous determination of the authorities, etc. The fear is increased by the appearance of the new virus strains. Traditional interpersonal communication loses its habitual human features. A respectable member of a community knows from the media that a disease causing virus can manifest itself in very different ways. A person who can infect others may not be aware that he or she is dangerous. In other words, during the pandemic not only any unknown person but also an acquaintance is a possible carrier of the virus. Mask mode of life makes people look alike. We are accustomed to reacting to facial expression in our everyday communication. Of course, we habitually transfer this perception of people to impersonal masks, but a significant part of the human world familiar to us has disappeared, and we have to complete it in our minds. Moreover, if we see a person without a mask in a public place, we perceive him or her as a direct threat. Those whose faces are covered with masks are becoming a new normality, while an uncovered face is becoming a sign, <coughs> a sign of danger. Smiles disappear by degrees and smiles have always been intuitively perceived as indicators of good intentions. A usual handshake changes to a something different, not yet fully established, uh, like elbow nudges. This makes life in a large city even less sociable than usual. What safe communication can be invented in such a situation? Only communication through electronic facilities. And it looks natural in this case. Thus, the COVID-19 situation forces an inhabitant of a large city to dive deeper and deeper into virtual reality. 
this situation, lasting almost for two years already, leads to disintegration of society. Uncertainty must gradually disappear along with the severity of the situation and rationality must again become more justified. However, one cannot deny the possibility of a new pandemic or a new wave which will again force everyone to alienate, to communicate using <clears throat> intermediaries of gadgets instead of face-to-face -face meetings. Society will live with it and we can only guess that social and psychological consequences we will have in the future. Transition, of, uh, transition to distance learning with unknown consequences is an educational effect of the pandemic. It is important that uh, people start learning this uh, way of communication from early time. That's why I'm talking uh, about uh, education here. We do not know yet the social and psychological consequences of this process. There is a transition from face-to-face -face learning as a type of socialization to online learning under the hypercritical slogans of improved quality. The means and conditions are being <clears throat> created for the transition to remote technologies. In reality, it turned out in the increased workload of teachers and diminished quality of education. Another effect is the growth of education-related deception. It is very easy for students not to be present at lectures during remote online sessions and to download the required works from the internet during various tests. Learning in many ways turns into an imitation of learning. It is training to a custom to simulacra from the beginning of educational process. The traditional interpersonal communication loses its habitual human features. As computers become increasingly important in, uh, in isolation, thus reinforcing virtual communication, the man turns out to be more and more manipulated and controlled. If we recall David Riesman's concept of the crowd of loneliness, uh, then the real pandemic and post-pandemic situation may be the crowd of encapsulated individuals convinced of their uniqueness. However, this uniqueness manifests itself in social network communication, while the level of the true face-to-face -face communication fades under the influence of new conditions. Any virtual identity in social networks can be easily banned for their words. Therefore, averaging, people, uh, averaging people's ideas and thoughts may become the absolute norm with ever-decreasing amplitude of deviations. Taking into account highly fragmented thinking of the modern man and already firmly assimilated psychology of consumerism, we are moving towards a different type of society. In such a society, any traditional interpersonal relations may be replaced by virtual relations with enormous level of technological and also ideological control. The situation is aggravated by the increasing replacement of morally binding interpersonal relationships with legally defined in different relationships, a tendency that has existed since the beginning of the 20th century. By this time, internal mechanisms based on traditional relations for regulating relations within social groups have been destroyed due to urbanization and technological revolutions. The older generations cease to be an example for the new generations entering the world, since their work and life experience most often doesn't correspond to the new social uh, realities. The simplest test for determining this situation is trying to answer the question who will be 
the newly born person. We find ourselves in a society that can be defined and all, as overheated or fluid. Uh, if we use the uh, Sigmund Bauman uh, definition of uh, society as liquid modernity, and he describes this state of the um, state of the situation as follows: and indi an individualized, privatized version of modernity, with the burden of pattern weaving and the responsibility for failure falling <coughs> primarily on the individual's shoulders. It is the patterns of dependency and interaction whose turn to be <coughs> liquefied has, has now come. They are now <coughs> mollable to an extent unexperienced by and unimaginable for past generations. But like all fluids, they do not keep their shape for long. Shaping them is easier than keeping them in shape. Uh, it was a quote um, from his Liquid Modernity. Now, accordingly, such a society can be regulated only from, the, from outside. It is with the help of law and not with the help of ethics based on the internal attitudes of individuals. This from the outside for society means regulation by state. Law takes the place of tradition when issues were resolved on the basis of previous practice. Moreover, and this is fundamental, the law rational, rationalizes all kinds of human relations to the limit <coughs> uh, which is uh, unimaginable. Relations, uh, sorry, Tradition is aimed at preserving the past. Law is aimed at shaping the future. Relations in almost all social groups are increasingly regulated by certain system, systems <coughs> of legal relations, ranging from professional corporations to family. The ridiculous notion of professional honor is a thing of the past, since the word of honor of a professional means nothing without a corresponding contract. What was certainly a personal matter, a matter of personal responsibility, is regulated now from the outside. If in rural society relations with neighbors were built on the principle of one's own involuntary friend, and the elders decided various disputes based on their experience and tradition, then in urban society this is in principle imp impossible. And um, this situation is uh, greatly aggravated by uh, this situation during pandemic. Uh, with the support of new technologies, the way by which the societies are constructed is the replacement of traditional interpersonal relationships by new depersonalized and dehumanized ones, facilitating possibility for management of society using different computer technologies. Accordingly, all these things lead to the situation where human personalities are gradually transforming into generalized human beings which can be easily replaced by each other. Thank you.